parents because they brought us into the world. They are asl, but the imam is asl wujud. There would be no world right now if there was no hujjah. He is the source of why we're here. And there's a very important relationship with him that we're not seeing, we're not living. You know the, the story of Nabi Yusuf and his brothers and uh, Ben Yamin? You guys know that story? You know how when his brothers came, they didn't recognize Nabi Yusuf. But Nabi Yusuf saw Ben Yamin. And Ben Yamin, he had things, he had certain attributes that Nabi Yusuf, Nabi Yusuf wanted because he wanted to keep him with him. So what they did was, because Nabi Yusuf wanted Ben Yamin to stay with him, they organized a plan where he took a, a cup and he planted it in the bag of Ben Yamin. And then he said, wait, there's a cup missing. There's something missing. And all the brothers said, What's, no, there's no way anyone here would have stolen it. So they searched the bags and it turns out in Ben Yamin's bag, he framed him. Nabi Yusuf made a scenario and he framed his brother that he stole the cup. Because they said, I, I must take him prisoner now. They said, no, please don't take him prisoner. His dad's an old man. He means a lot to his dad. So Nabi, Nabi Yusuf responded with the ayah, قَالَ مَعَادَ اللَّهِ أَنْ نَأْخُذَا إِلَّا مَنْ وَجَدْنَا مَتَاعَنَا عَنْدَ إِنَّا إِذًا لَظَالِمُونَ said, God forbid we take anyone except who we find our goods with. We'll only take those who our goods are with. So Benjamin and the cup. If I take anyone else who my goods are not with, because they told him, take one of us instead. He said, if I take anyone else, then I'm an oppressor. I cannot be an oppressor. I must take the one who took my goods, who has my goods. This mata'ana, my goods. What goods though? The cup? Is that really what he means? You see, for every dhahir in the Quran, there's a bottom. <clears throat> Nabi Yusuf, alayhi salam, he's the insan al kamil He's the perfect human being in his time. The way Imam Mahdi is the insan al kamil now. Nabi Yusuf, he has all the attributes that we love. Courage, faith, he has manners. He has knowledge. He has all the mata. Mata. He says, Mata'ana anda. So he looks at Benjamin. That means Benjamin has some mata'a that Nabi Yusuf wants. He has certain attributes. Nabi Yusuf is not the cup. So he said, I want to bring those mata'a here because if I take anyone else, I'll be a person. That means anyone who doesn't have the attributes that the Imam wants from us, he won't take us. He wants us to have certain attributes. Then he will take us. When he sees his mata with us, he will take us with him. He will create a scenario, the same way Nabi Yusuf created a scenario. He will frame us. He will plant a cup in our bag and he will come to us. You don't have to worry about it. He will do it for us. He will bring us to him. We have to have those mata. But what are they? What are those attributes that he wants? Now, there's so many, but I wanted to remember a few. And bear with me with these. Sorry, that it's the final night, so I'm trying to get everything out as much as I can, while I still can. So those attributes, what are they? First one, very important, that we all must have in this day and age. Maybe the most important attribute, basira, is vision. Just know, be aware, basira. Don't be duped. Like, for example, the, the Canadian Prime Minister that was just elected, Justin Trudeau, I think his name is... You know, everyone's so happy about him. Everyone's posting on Facebook. Uh, he's like, he's good with Muslims and hijab. And, and then just check out what he says about Israel. You know, we have Israel's back. No matter what happens with Israel. The one thing that all the Canadian parties can agree on is we back Israel. But Muslims, no basira, straight away. He says some nice thing about hijab. Oh, we love him. We start putting him on our profile pictures. Where's the basira? How can we so easily be tricked by pretty words? Where's the basira? Again, basira, unity. Sunnis and Shias. How much must be said about that now? People are trying to conquer Islam by dividing us. People with basira know that unity is one of the main principles that we must adhere to today. That we are one ummah. That if we stick together, we won't be broken. That it's not Sunni versus Shia. That was happening what now is not that. They want us to believe that so we separate and it's not that. We can't let it be that. Or our differences with Maraja, let alone Sunni and Shia. You know, if you follow Sheikh Wahid Khurasani, 
that means you love Sayyidah Zahra. If you follow Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, that means you love Imam Hussein. If you follow Sayyid Khamenei, that means you love Imam Mahdi. Everyone has an Imam and it's like a football team. I'm against you, you're against me, I don't sit with you, you don't sit with me. Where did that come from? There's no such thing as a marja for an imam. There's no such thing as a marja having a team. The marja don't speak like this to each other. It has to be unity. Sunni Shia, unity between us as well. It's okay to talk to someone else, to have some healthy dialogue with someone else. Find out what he thinks, let him find out what you think. Have basira. Oh, it's muharram. Muharram is a time for change. It's a time for us to grow. To grow closer to our imam. But then one of the questions that we will get every single day is tabbir halal or haram. Are we still there? It's tiring. Why are we growing? Still on the same subjects. Year in, year out. Where's the human growth? This is so much more. This revolution is a human revolution for us to grow from. There are so many things that we have to have basila about. Personalities and politics. This day and age, the cultures, the technology, east and west, you have to have basira, or you will lose your faith. You have to be aware, follow the news, find out what's going on, find out the stances of your ulama, and be a free thinker. Um, my relative, she messaged me uh, at university, they all say, Imam Khomeini is an evil man. Imam Khomeini is someone who was a tyrannical ruler, he was a massacre. She told me, Hassan, is this true? I told her, no. I don't think I've ever read about a man like Imam Khomeini before, such a pure man. And I've tried my best every single night. I've mentioned one thing from him. And you guys have probably not noticed that. Because I think that if we hold on to someone like him, we won't go astray. And people, they have doubt because there's so much character assassination. There's so much propaganda to bring us away from someone like Imam Khomeini. People don't like to talk about these things. But I want to talk about these things. No, not at all. My advice, everyone hang on to him as much as you can. Read from him. Or the world right now. Look at the stances in the world. Saudi Arabia. Find out about Saudi Arabia. Look to its history. You know Saudi Arabia, you know the royal family of Saudi Arabia? They're actually from the heritage of Bani Qinaqa the Jewish tribe that used to fight the Rasul. They're from that tribe. They're, they're, when people say they're Jewish, it's not some, you know, arrivals, crazy thing. It's, it's the history. The, the family tree is there if you want to check it out. Find out about the history of Wahhabism and Takfiris. And that that's not Sunnis. And that it's not Sunnis versus Shias. It's Sunnis and Shias together versus them. And don't be fooled. You see what happens right now. You see, you see ISIS, you see Daesh, you see Takfiris, Jabhat al-Nusra, you think these guys are the real enemy. You know, Israel is not that bad. <laughs> it's two sides of the same coin. If you say that, you're not very politically aware. Israel is the main enemy. The main enemy. You must always remember that. And any friend with Israel, we have to disassociate from. The main enemy. Some ulama, some sheikhs, when what began in Syria five years ago, they said that what's happening there is not true jihad, and the people who die are not shuhada. If we went by what they said, and these are sheikhs in Qom, 20 years in Qom, 30 years in Qom saying this, not any, any normal sheikh has much knowledge, and he's saying this, no jihad in Syria. What's happening right now is not true jihad, not for God. And that if we were to follow what they said, then Sayyidah Zainab Shrine would have been demolished. Thankfully, men of God were there, they protected it, but they were given permission to by our great Maraja. So Maraja, they acted fast. We have to have Basira to see who are the true scholars, who are the non-true scholars. And it's 100%. Ayatollah Khamenei, he said at that time, he acted very fast. He said that Every single drop of blood in Syria is on my neck on the Day of Judgment. Go. We'll see him. The sea. We're going to follow this one. Five years later, it shows the importance of what happened and the first action showed. But before then, everyone's like, how could they do this? Oppression. 
helping the oppressor, no basira. Basira, very important for us to follow.